with Operation Market Garden, Montgomery planned and hoped to create a bridgehead into Germany and end war by Christmas of 1944. But when that operation uh, failed, all the attention immediately was directed to the port of Antwerp uh, to shorten the logistical line to the front since all the supplies were still coming into the uh, Normandy area. Um, but to be able to use the port of Antwerp, the Allies first had to secure the sea entrance that leads towards the city of Antwerp uh, because the Germans had turned the Walcheren Peninsula into a true fortress with coastal batteries securing that sea entrance. Um, and to be able to disable all of those coastal batteries, the Allies came up with several operations, including two amphibious landings and a frontal attack that took place right here on a heavily defended mile-long causeway that was also the only land connection onto the Walcheren Peninsula. First of all, I want to apologize for the fact that my nose is going to turn red, but it is cold as heck today. Um, but nonetheless, I'm still going to do my very best to show you guys this location. But anyway, the first landmark that you see whenever you come across this location is a pretty impressive monument uh, that commemorates the heavy fightings that took place on this causeway at the end of 1944. Um, but there is one monument, and let me turn around, that is uh, this one right in the middle, is a monument that also commemorates the heavy fighting uh, that took place on this location but that took place in the early hours of the Second World War when Nazi Germany invaded the Netherlands. There were some French troops stationed on the Walcheren Peninsula to support the Dutch armed forces uh, fighting the, the Germans and they even did so after the capitulation of the Netherlands. Um, I didn't know that information but I came across that information which is pretty interesting. So, these are the three monuments uh, that commemorate the heavy fightings that took place on this location in 1940 and in 1944. Um, and this one in front of me, um, give me a second to walk towards it, is the one that commemorates the French troops that fought against the Germans on Dutch soil. Um, let me adjust the lighting and as you can see, well my French is really poor so I'm not even going to make an attempt to uh, read it because I'm going to make a complete fool out of myself. Um, but the fighting took place on the 15th, 16th and 17th of May 1940 by the, I believe, the 224th Regiment and the 271st Regiment. So yeah, really interesting. And uh, yeah, you learn something new every day. Well, and here on my left is another one that commemorates the uh, Canadian troops of the Black Watch Regiment um, that fought and died on this location. And as you can see, in total there were um, 135 Canadian infantry soldiers that have been killed or wounded on this causeway. And this monument was revealed on the 31st of October 1987 by uh, back then the Prince of uh, the Netherlands. And on my right is a, another monument and that one commemorates the 52nd Lowland Division um, that forced a crossing on this location on the 2nd of November 1944 and uh, liberated this island. So yeah, pretty cool to see these monuments that commemorate the uh, heavy fighting that took place on this uh, location. But although these, this is very interesting, um, the real thing that I wanted to show you guys is that over there, that is a, a large layout that shows the troop movements that were done during the uh, Battle of the Scheldt. So let me uh, walk over there and uh, show you guys that, the beautiful uh, layout. The Battle of the Scheldt consisted out of several operations uh, of which the first main one was Operation Switchback um, and that one was launched to get across the border into the Netherlands to secure the town of Breskens to launch an amphibious attack onto the uh, Walcheren Peninsula north of that. The second one was Operation Fatality 
and that was to advance east of the peninsula to um, halt at this uh, dam where I am standing right now. And the third one was Operation Infatuate and in this operation um, the previous operations would come together with two amphibious landings um, in West Capella in the, ta in the city of uh, Vlissingen and a frontal attack right here on the dam where I am standing. Um, and the reason that this had to be done was, um, as you can see right here, the city of Antwerp is right over here and all the way over here is the um, sea entrance towards the city. So yeah, you can imagine that this had to be taken in order to safely reach the port of Antwerp. And another thing that this monument provides is a perfect view of the dam which is right over there where all the cars are driving at the moment and another thing that I need to mention is that this complete area is nearly the same as it was in 1944 except for one thing and that is that these fields in front of me would have been completely flooded with seawater since this was a uh, peninsula and the dam was the only land connection onto this uh, peninsula but throughout the years they have uh, dredged these fields in order to create more agriculture um, fields. So yeah, that is the uh, main thing that has changed um, in this area. I have moved over to the east side of the causeway um, and this was also the side where the Allies would have been during the battle over the causeway that is located behind me. But while I'm on this side of the uh, elevated road I have spotted some German bunkers uh, that were most likely equipped with anti-aircraft cannons on top of them um, because the causeway was a target for the RAF to blow up in order to cut off the island from the mainland uh, so that the Germans um, weren't able to supply the troops that were located or stationed on uh, the Walcheren Peninsula. And the Germans of course didn't want that to happen so they placed several bunkers um, on different locations to, to protect the uh, causeway against aerial attacks. But let's go take a look at the bunkers and uh, see what else we can learn. So this is the first German bunker that is located um, near the causeway and a couple of meters down the road right over there is the second one. I'm not really a bunker expert so I am not going to be pretending to be one but I believe that this structure would have been the living quarters for the uh, Germans that would be operating the uh, anti-aircraft cannon that would have been mounted on top of the bunker right over there. Speaking about the Germans that were stationed near this uh, causeway, these weren't Germany's finest soldiers uh, because they belonged to the 70th um, Infantry Division and that division was quickly known as the uh, Weisbrot Division which in English means a white bread division um, because several uh, members of that division suffered from um, stomach injuries and they had to eat white bread um, so they wouldn't get stomach aches. Um, so yeah, that's uh, something about the Germans that were placed near this causeway. Um, but now let's uh, walk up these st stairs and take a look at the uh, location where the anti-aircraft cannon would have been mounted. I've just walked up the stairs to take a closer look if this bunker was indeed equipped with an anti-aircraft cannon um, on top of it. Uh, well it was and that bunker on my left right over there is identical to this one. So these two bunkers were placed uh, right on this location to protect the causeway against aerial attacks. And being on top of the bunker you have a, a great view of the causeway that you can see before me. where. Uh, which looked a little different in 1944 because back then it was a single road dam with a uh, with a rail tracks running besides it but give me a second to uh, move uh, out of the wind because the, the wind is picking up I have moved away from the wind and I am now back on the west side of the causeway uh, because there is an information panel with a uh, beautiful 
blow up about the battles that took place on this um, causeway. This is the layout that I was talking about and it shows um, beautifully how this causeway was conquered by the Allies. And when the Allies arrived at this causeway on October 31st 1944 they stopped for a while at this location um, where after a while the C Company of the Black Watch Regiment were tasked with a first attempt to get onto the Walchen Peninsula. Um, but because the Germans had set up a really strong defensive position uh, right over here, they were forced to a standstill uh, roughly halfway to them and they seek shelter in a crater that was created by the Germans um, to cut off the peninsula from the mainland, which uh, they failed, but the only thing that they succeeded in was that they um, disabled the causeway from vehicle use. And after a while the Black Watch Regiment had to withdraw to the east side of the causeway. And that evening on October the 31st the B Company of the Galgary Highlanders uh, made a second attempt to get onto the peninsula. But also they were stopped halfway to them and uh, seek shelter in that very same crater. Um, it, was also, it was only after an artillery barrage by the Allies that they managed to uh, get onto the peninsula and even set up a bridgehead. Um, but that was for a short period of time because the Germans um, immediately set up several counterattacks um, to push them back to the east uh, side of the causeway. And the fighting that took place at that point was so fierce that uh, it even led to man-to-man -man fighting and the Germans even, even used flamethrowers to push them back to the east side of the causeway, uh, which they managed to, uh, to do so after a while. It was at this point that the military high command uh, realized that if they would continue um, this way it would, cause, it would cause a lot of manpower and a lot of time to get onto the peninsula. So they came up with um, Operation Mallard and that was a flanking mission to flank the German stronghold position from the side. It took the Allies over two hours to make, make the crossing onto the peninsula because this as you can see right here this is uh, water and this entire piece was mud so they had to stop the boats here get out of the boats and crawl through the mud to get onto the peninsula but after they did um, simultaneously um, there was a third attempt and that was done on the in the night of the first to the second of November uh, 1944 and while this attack was uh, launched, they were also on the peninsula and they made a flanking maneuver to the German stronghold. Um, and at that point, the German stronghold position was um, defeated and the Allies managed to get onto the uh, peninsula. But while this was all going on, there was a second uh, operation going on and that was Operation um, Inf Infatuate 1 and 2. Um, that were amphibious landings um, that took place, one in the town of Flissingen or Flushing in English and a second one in the town of Westcapella. But those are um, operations that I am going to um, cover in a future video. I hope you find it an interesting story that I told you about this rather unknown battle that had to be done in order to use the port of Antwerp and to shorten the logistical line to the front. And this is one out of multiple videos that I am going to make about the Battle of the Scheldt. So for now, have a good day and I hope you'll join me on my next travel to history. See you later.